In this episode, you will learn how to configure a macOS application with settings in the menu bar. You will learn how to enable or disable options, and also you will learn how to create your own about screen. Let's get started. Okay, here we are in this application that I created for a demonstration of how certain algorithms can sort and see the results in real time. It's a pretty nice application that you can select multiple algorithms here and it has different options. For example, you can increase or reduce the amount of the duration of, for animations. You can ha hide the power values here and also showing or displaying the uh, timer that is behind. Also, you can select multiple uh, set of values here. I will set it in 20 just for demonstration. And if I click here, well, it is sorting, right? Uh, I will explain this application in detail in another video. Uh, by the way, if you wanted to take a look right away, here is in the description for you. But the point of the video right now is that as you can see, I created these settings for the application. This application is running in a multi-platform environment. That means I can run this application in different OS, for example, iOS, iPhone and iPad, and also Vision OS. But for Mac OS, I would like to add one particular thing, which is configuring the settings here in the menu bar. As you can see, we have like, some default options here, like file, edit, view, etc. But I would like to add my own settings. So all those settings that you're seeing here to be here in the menu bar. And in Swift UI, in multi-platform ecosystem, it's relatively straightforward. And I will show you how to do it. Let me stop the app. Let me close this. And as you can see, I am here in the Sorting's app app. Oh, why is this repetitive? As you can see here, I'm in sorting app, but for some reason it's doubling the app word. Forget about it. But anyway, the thing is that we have the sorting view that you saw earlier. We have an environment object that is consuming the settings. And this is the variable that is holding the settings. If you open it, you can see right away that this is a class and is conforming the observable macro. And yes, it is a singleton, and yes, it's running on Swift 6. So you can start complaining in the comments below that I'm using singletons in a project. Now, um, seriously, for this demo, I mean, I don't care. So, but in reality, you should just take care yourself if a singleton is good idea or not. Topic for later. Anyway, the thing here is that these are the settings that we are using in the app. Animation, showing or hiding bar, um, showing timer, etc. So we we'll want to use all those settings in the menu bar for macOS. So in order to do that, we're gonna create a new file here, new empty file, and we're gonna call it Mac Settings Commands. The name's up to you. If you find a better name, please do it. This one will be a struct and it will conform commands protocol. And as you can see right away, it is saying conforming types represent to a group of related commands that can be exposed to the user in the main menu of macOS. That is exactly what we want. Let's import SwiftUI. Yes, we need it. SwiftUI, there you go. Okay, SwiftUI is imported and is required for commands. And we are not following the commands protocol requirement. This is because commands it's basically following the same pattern than uh, view. What I mean is it needs a body, a body. But instead of some view, you will say some commands. Yes. And as you can imagine, inside of this, we're going to start putting all the settings that we want to display to the user in the menu bar. The first command option we need is the title of the settings. In this case, I will use command menu. There you go. And we're going to call it settings. Okay, that will be the first step. Now here, we're going to put 
every single option that we want to display to the user. Now, how are you going to get those options, you may ask? Since our settings are conforming to observable macro, we can use bindable. Bindable, there you go. And we're going to call our settings and we can set settings dot shared. Oh, where's the name? No, sorting settings. There you go. This bindable is basically allowing to modify the settings that we want to display here. So that means that no matter if we are modifying in the internal menu, the bottom with the year, or if we're doing it in a menu bar in macOS, so the same settings will stay updated. And we can attach this bindable because we are using observable macro. If you're not using observable macro, then this formula won't work, okay? But I will assume that most of you can because it's like, you know, using it from iOS 17 and above. If you cannot use it yet, maybe in a couple of weeks, you will allow to do it once we upgrade to iOS 19, if you're watching this video right away. Anyway, so I assume you can use this bindable and it will be the straightforward way to do it. I think we can see now something in the screen. So let's call this max settings command in the application. So for that, we're gonna go here, sorting app, and we're going to call commands. Commands is a modifier that will call your commands, your custom commands. So here we can use Mac settings command. Okay, let's compile the app. And yep, there we go. We have settings in the menu bar, although it's empty, but you can see that the option is there. So it's, it's a great feedback. Okay. Let's go back and add more settings here. Okay, the next step is adding options. I will start with this one, enabling animation. And it's a simple toggle that you can modify here. So that's why we are using bindable because it will allow us to modify the settings. If we're using an environment object, you cannot do that. But with bindable, you can. So here we are just enabling it and disabling it. Now, one cool thing of macOS is that you can use some shortcuts in your keyboard to call those settings. Instead of just clicking it many times, you can use a combination of command plus some other keys and you can get the same result. For example, you can invoke that a shortcut for letter A to enable animations and disable it, okay? So just with this simple modifier in toggle, you can do that right away. Now, let me add a couple of other toggles here to show bar values, right? So we are modifying these settings here and also show the timer to hide it or show it. And you can see that I'm adding also some keyboard shortcuts, letter B for this one and letter T for this one. The point of this is just for illustrating that you can use shortcuts, you can add better shortcuts in your application. Now let me run it again and see the result. We go to settings, there we go, yeah? There's a toggle here and we can Hide the tab bar. No, oh, sorry, the timer. There you go. And now we can uh, hide the values. There you go. Yeah, it's working. And if we go here to the other settings, you will see that those options are disabled. Yes, because we are sharing the same settings here in this screen and also in these settings, which is awesome. Next, we will add a menu. Oh, a sub menu option. Oops. This one will contain some preset speeds. In my application, as you saw at the beginning, I can increase or decrease the speed of the animations. So here I want to put some preset speeds if you want to right away put something really fast or really slow, but just so has an alternative of the slider that you saw earlier. For that here, I'm creating a soft menu that will represent that. This is especially useful if you want to put some buttons has many options. For example, here 
I'm putting this preset speed to fast and this button in this button, if it's pressed, it will change the settings animation duration to just 0.1. So, and this will update the settings and you're good to go. We can add other different settings here. So I'm putting normal speed, slow, very slow. And I think you get the idea. Let's compile the app again. And we can see here, okay, the other options are there, but the presets are here. So we can put fast and we can start doing things. Yeah, everything is going pretty fast. Now, if we go here again, we can maybe show per, very slow. Let's, let's do it. Yeah, it's pretty slow. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to sleep right now. Okay, this is working. However, I would like also to have like, what is the current option that I selected? Unless in terms of this uh, settings, presets, it will be great to have what is the current option. So what you can do is just put in this current animation duration text. If we run the application again, we can see right away, okay, what is the current settings? Oh, it's just 0 0.5. If I select this one fast, yes, I mean, we close it, but you can see that if you open it again, the current option is 0 0.1. If I change it to slow, you will see, yeah, right away. So this is great because next time you open it, you can see that uh, what was the last option in your application. However, as you can see here, we are creating multiple categories of options. So we have all the toggles here, but also we have the uh, preset speeds and we have the current time, uh, everything in the same hierarchy. Will be great to um, establish groups for each of those categories. And we can do that with the macOS settings. Let me go back and we can create sections. For example, we can create an animation speed section, ready to go. And we can create a section for a visualization, for example. There we go. And let's have a run again the app. And there you go. Now you have visualization in one section and the animation speed in another, which is awesome. Lastly, I will add one more section for the data set to change the uh, amount of values to be sorted. Here, I'm adding a section again, data set. I'm adding the menu that I say type. And as you can see here, we can also use for each. For example, instead of putting things one by one, I can use just a for each with a different set of values from an enum and just displayed buttons. So here, yeah, it's a cool way if you have a deterministic number of values and you want to repeat yourself. Well, this is another way to do it. And yeah, I'm adding buttons here and also I'm adding what is the text related to that current option. Let me run again, you know, let's go to settings. There you go. Yeah, you can see large set is, yeah, super large. And you can see right away that my current option is large set. If I change it to small again, and we go back, there we go. The current set is there. Okay, cool. Now, let me go back to sorting app. Right now we have this commands. And as I mentioned earlier, this is a multi-platform application. So what will happen if I want to run this on iPhone 16? It is working. Even though we have these command settings for macOS, the app is still running in multiple environments, which is great. However, I would like to show you that for some reason, maybe you want to just hide this option for other environments, other OSs that are not Mac OS. If that's the case, you can just use if OS and put Mac OS. Although it's not fully necessary as you saw right away, but it is good in terms of you are fading some code here and you can right away identify that this code is just specifically for macOS. Unless for this case, it's not fully necessary, but I will recommend you in terms of keeping your code isolated. So, and also this will ensure that if you're making a change in macOS that for some reason is not compatible with other 
OS, like iOS or Vision, you keep everything separate. Okay, let me go back to macOS for really quick and let me do two more things before wrapping up. Let me run the app again. Yeah, we have settings here, but I would like to also add something about this application, okay? And about the screen. And as you can see this about the screen is pretty ugly, right? I want to create my own about the screen. Actually, I created my own, it's here. So I would like to use it uh, because, you know, here I have all my social media and yada yada. Okay, so how can I do it? Let me close this thing and let me go back to certain app. So one way to do it when macOS is introducing some default or placeholder views for our application, we can uh, update or override what macOS is doing for us. In this case, there are several categories for those um, options. Here, there is one called App Info, okay? And we can use this command group and forcing that we want to replace this App Info, okay? So when we do that, now is our responsibility to put something here to display to the user. In this case, since that this is an App Info, well, we want to add some about or particular information that we want to customize here. Now, if I go here and tap this, you will see that the info, app info, is basically replacing about app, okay? So let me see what happened if we do that just with an empty command group. If we go here, yeah, it's empty. There's nothing here anymore. Now, how can we display this about the screen? Actually, we are not going to put the view here. What we're gonna do is put in an action that will trigger the about the screen. In this case, I'm going to just create a button calling it about sorting visualizer, which is the name of the app, okay? And will be um, another option, like the ones that we are creating here in Mac settings. And this will contain a button that will show the about button. As you can see here, I already created this state and it will be as simple as putting this, this little sheet here is presented, show about, and now to show the about screen. Let's run it again and look at this. We are seeing the custom text about the about the screen. And if we press it, there you go. This is the custom, um, more beautiful certain visualizer about the screen. And if you want to follow me, you have all those links in the description below as well. Now, finally, I would like to mention one more thing. This one more thing is that we have multiple default settings that maybe are not useful for our application. So in my case, I wanted to find a way to remove them. And what I did was just put in these command groups, similar to what we did to, with app info, but instead I just put nothing. So this is basically removing or putting away a couple of options in the menu bar. If it's what you want, well, this is a cool way to do it. If you have a better way to do it, please let me know in the comments because I couldn't find a better way. Now, look, file, edit, all those things are gone. And now we just keep view because I think it's important to enter in full screen, the regular settings, the about screen, and other options about the window and help. Yeah, I mean, you can remove everything else if you want, but I just decided to keep those default options for me. And that's about how you can create commands or settings options for macOS using command protocol and also this commands uh, modifier. I'm hoping this video was very useful for you. And if that was the case, please give me your like and subscription because this content is free. I'm not earning any money for doing that. So it's just basically pure love for you. Remember, my name is Pete and this, this is Sufan Tips. Thanks for watching and have a great day.